Welcome back dear viewer to Mostly Racing, and welcome back to my review of the 1999 season. If you enjoyed this series of videos, then please do give it a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. It's time for race number 636, and round 6 of the season, the 1999 Canadian Grand Prix. <laughs> Hakkinen was on a run of five consecutive pole positions, but finally Michael Schumacher stopped the rods by claiming his 21st F1 pole position. Hakkinen kept maximum pressure up though, joining his title rival in the front row, with a time just 0.029 seconds slower, the joint 37th smallest pole gap in F1 history up to that point. No major surprises in the grid behind. Irvine Coulthard, second row. Best of the rest, Barrichello, Frenton and Fisichella immediately behind. Truly again in the top 10 in his Prost, and Zanardi outqualified his teammate Ralf Schumacher in one of his rare demonstrations of his talent in 1999. As I mentioned in my review of the Spanish Grand Prix, Ricardo Zonta had recovered from his foot injury he sustained in Brazil, and was back into the second BAR seat, at Sarlo's expense. Michael Schumacher had a 6 point lead going into the race. How would things play out? Let's find out. And in Canada, it is... Go! Michael Schumacher moves across, cuts across. Hacken and Eddie Irvine trying to go up the inside, planning to do so. Are they all going to get around? There's one! That's, the, that's it! It's a, it's a frost again! So, and it looks to me, and it's Jarno Trulli. Jarno Trulli has gone off, but hopefully they'll be able to keep the race going. Trilly's crash at Turn 1 was almost a carbon copy of Wurtz's own accident in 1998, minus the flip. Arriving at the apex with way too much speed, and taking other drivers out with him, making it a DNF for himself and a Lacey at Turn 1 for the second straight year. Barrichello was caught up in the carnage, and retired on lap 14 due to the damage sustained. The safety car was deployed while the mess was cleaned up. The order for the restart on lap 3 was Michael Schumacher, Hakkinen, Irvine, Fitzcarraldo in fourth after starting seventh. Cracking start from the Benetton. Coulthard fifth and Frenson sixth. Unlike the circuit to Catalonia, Montreal is good for overtaking, and David Coulthard in the McLaren only spent a single lap behind Fisichella. Moments later, the wall claims its first victim. Bring on the wall! This is what happened. Barrichello managed to get going again after the pit stop. There is Zonta hitting the wall on the exit to turn 13. Ricardo Zonta hope his foot was okay, and the safety car is deployed again. Second restart on lap 7. The order was unchanged from the last, except for Coulthard getting past Fisichella for fourth. The race could now get into something of a rhythm, and the on-track battles were now defined. Schumacher keeping Hakkinen at bay as they traded fastest laps, while the British number two drivers mirrored their team leaders, but falling behind them. During the adverts, which should never be a thing in live sports, a thing happened. Bring on the wall! Plenty of action, Damon Hill here, as you see, really getting it sideways, loses the rear end, hits that wall. Victim number two for the wall, and its first champion. No safety car needed this time, as a yellow Jordan parked up on the side of the track, but well off the racing line. By lap 21, the gaps were Schumacher leading, Hakkinen 2.7 seconds behind in second, Irvine 9 seconds behind, Coulthard 10.9 seconds behind, Fisichella 18.2 behind, and Frentzen 21.7 behind to round out the points positions. Despite outqualifying his teammate, Zanardi was having a terrible day. After running 8th in the early stages, he outbraked himself going into the hairpin at the top of the track and fell to the back of the field. He spent the rest of the day battling with the Minardis. As we look down on the track, you can see Zanardi there chasing, would you believe, Luca Badar. Uh. During the adverts, the unthinkable. Bring on the wall! Well, that was very clearly a mistake by myself. Uh, I seem to make one a year, and uh, I hope that is the last one I make this year. The race and world championship leader Michael Schumacher became the third victim of the wall, and its second champion. Suddenly, Mika Hakkinen has a comfortable lead over Irvine, around 7 seconds, with his teammate third, and its advantage McLaren again for the second race running. Also, with this order, it would mean Hakkinen would take over the lead in the World Championship for the first time in 1999. 
Lap 35. Bring on the wall! James Allen in the pits wants the news. Right There's me. Villeneuve out! Sorry to interrupt you, James. Villeneuve is the fourth soul claimed by the wall and a hat trick of world champions. In a one stop race and the safety car coming out roughly at the midpoint, it was everyone into the pits. Coulthard was briefly ahead of Irvine, as McLaren didn't want to stack. No delta time in those days, so cars would race at full pace until they reached the safety car, so Coulthard didn't lose any time. The same thinking didn't do Coulthard many favours at Hockenheim the following year, mind. Restart on lap 41. No 2021 Abu Dhabi nonsense here. The lapped cars stayed in the pack, so Hakkinen had a two-car buffer to himself and Irvine in second. It's a golden opportunity for Mika Hakkinen on lap 41 with 20 laps to go. Coulthard challenges. David Coulthard passes Eddie Irvine. No, he doesn't. Out goes Irvine. Out goes Coulthard. Oh, my goodness. Irvine rejoins. Now, they both rejoin, but right at the back of the field. Wow, what about that? Wow, wow, wow. I'd love to know people's takes on that crash and sadly I can't find any higher quality footage of it. For me, it's mainly on Coulthard. Like Martin Brundle would say, you don't go for a half-hearted tackle in football or rugby because you'll hurt yourself. The Scot either needed to back out completely of the move or keep side by side with Irvine going into two. Because there were so few cars left in the race and on the lead lap, Irvine was only down to eighth and Coulthard ninth. DC needed to stop to change his front wing, which put him down to 10th and things got even worse for him as he received a 10 second stop and go penalty for passing the red light at the end of pit lane, as did Zanardi. What is with that red light at Montreal? The top six was now an unopposed Hakkinen leading Fisichella second, Frentzen third, Ralf Schumacher fourth, Johnny Herbert who made up three places on the restart fifth, and Pedro Diniz in the last of the points positions. Three of the top four seemingly out of contention. This was a day for the midfield runners to get themselves a bag full of points. Like we've seen a few times in 1999, there is little respect shown to blue flags. That two car buffer between Hakkinen and now Fisichella in second, the Minardi of Badoa and the Prost of Panis seemingly couldn't give a hoot about the race for the podium places. Fisichella comes up alongside Prost, just, and, and Heitzel Fritz who goes through. Fabulous. Pretty shocking stuff from Panis, quite frankly. Deservedly, both he and Badoa would also get 10 second stop and go penalties for ignoring blue flags. Frentzen up to second, and a furious Fisichella down to third. By lap 47, Irvine is back into the points and going on a mega charge and he begins to put Herbert under immense pressure for fifth. He continued to attack but struggled to find a way past. Finally, Eddie got by. Unconventional, but that's Eddie Irvine. No track limits back in those days. Next in his sight, his teammate's brother. Irvine going for it. Dodges out from behind Schumacher's rear wing. Is this where the superior power pays off? Yes, it does. On the approach to where Eddie Irvine moved up ahead of Johnny Herbert, and Irvine is now up into fourth position. 11 laps to go, 12 seconds away from Fisichella and a podium. He sets the fastest lap on lap 60, 61, and 62, but his charge was ultimately stopped when... And off goes Fredson! Well, right in the closing stages of the Canadian Grand Prix... The Germans had a better view of what happened to their man. It was a brake failure that did it. He was unhurt but stayed in the car out of disbelief more than anything else. Safety car out for the third time, and sadly the race would not restart, which is always a shame. This was the first Formula 1 Grand Prix to finish under a safety car. Mika Hakkinen wins in Montreal, the flags wave, he surges across the line. Two wins on the spin for the Finn. 12th of his career putting him level with Mario Andretti, Carlos Reutemann and Alan Jones. Giancarlo Fisichella made it a hat-trick of podium finishes in Canada thanks to his good start and maintaining a good race pace while those ahead got into incidents, and Eddie Irvine completing the unlikely podium after slicing through the field in the latter stages of the race. Ralph Schumacher finished 4th and Johnny Herbert and Pedro Diniz both scored their first points of the season. David Coulthard was unable to break into the top 6, so still only had 2 points finishes in the season. Hakkinen indeed replaced Michael Schumacher as championship leader with his 34 points. Bear in mind, neither of these two scored points in the opening round, 
So when looking at the last five races in isolation, they had scored double the points of the next highest driver, Irvine. In the battle for the best of the rest, with special guest David Coulthard, just one point separates Frenton in fourth and Ralph Schumacher in seventh. In the team standings, McLaren outscored Ferrari by six points, bringing the gap at the top down to just nine. The Woking team could really do with Coulthard picking up some decent results. With Frenson dropping out of the points in the past couple of races, and Damon Hill struggling, Jordan's third place was starting to look a bit shaky. Two points ahead of the table climbing Benetton team, and four points off the Ralph Schumacher carried Williams team. I'd give the race 7.5 out of 10. Lots of dramatic and iconic moments in this one, specifically with the Wall of Champions. The collision between the Ferrari and the McLaren is always worthy of note, and I loved Irvine's charge at the end of the race. The safety car finish though is what stops me from giving it an 8 out of 10. Driver of the day? Well, Hakkinen wasn't the fastest driver on this day. That was Michael Schumacher, and he had no challenge at the front. So I'll go Fisichella. Second after starting seventh, in what was the fourth or fifth fastest car? The next race, the French Grand Prix, an F1 classic. Thank you for watching, mostly racing as a solo endeavour by yours truly, so if you're willing and able, please do head over to my Patreon page and follow my Twitter.